Yeah, what a skill in there as well, isn't it? And uh, looking at the Dunfermline lineup. There we are, Andy Rhodes in goal. Uh, Raymond Sharp, who I've always felt, is a very, very promising young, young fullback, Jim. And uh, Isvan Cosma, of course. We just hope that on this big occasion, the big pitch, that he really turns it on. Yes, I think Cosmo plays a striker. <coughs> when I say Cosmo, he's signed as a midfielder. But uh, he's had one or two problems in that area. He's playing up front, his touch is excellent. Um, great skills, great passing ball. He's an athlete, typical European continental player. Mm. You know, easy stride. Uh, he saves a lot of time just bringing the ball down in that split setting, making the pass. Um, Raymond Sharp, excellent. He'll run. The, the big wide spaces will suit him to a tee um, mm. today. I'm a bit surprised that Ian McCall's only in, on the bench with young Eddie Cunnington. I no. kind of thought McCall might have started, no? No, I'm not surprised. Chris Sinclair, his father played in the 60s for Dunfermline. Chris Sinclair, mm -hmm. excellent. I, I went out to see him. He was actually playing at East Stirling's ground. They were playing in a cup final. He was playing against a team called Gerdoch. And I, I was speaking to his dad at the time. His dad said, you know, your usual father, come out and see the boy. I went to see him and some great touches. He played last week. The crowd will love him. They'll talk about Liverpool interesting him. He'll go out and I, I hope the lad is a character. Twice, when, when I try to sign him, a manager, what a manager mm. does, Dougie, when he brings a young player in, he says, right, for example, I've got 70 quid to give him basic a weed, I'll offer him 50. Mm -hmm. He'll refuse the 50, 50, I'll take him up to 70, he'll be <laughs> delighted. But Chris Sinclair, you know, I did that method. Mm. I said, right, Chris, uh, I'll give you that in your contract, whatever it was. Mm. He says, no, I'm wanting 24 hours to think about it. He came back, so I said, right, son, I've thought about it, today. I'll give you that. He says, no, no, I'm, no, I'm wanting. And he had come back with his own package. Now, I'm talking about when he's 17. It showed uh -huh. he's got a thinking head. Yeah. He's a good... The, the atmosphere, the pressure will not bother him today. He'll handle that. All right, that's interesting. So Jim Leishman saying, look out for Chris Sinclair, number 11 for Dunfermline. We're getting ever closer to kick-off time. And uh, the pre-match entertainment has been entertaining the, uh, the early arrivals. And uh, all the balloons and the colours of the respective clubs are just about to be released. And this is always <coughs> a, a spectacular spectacle as we await the kick-off in this Gold Cup final. There we go, the green and white of Fabernia. And that'll get a, a cheer from the Hibs fans, obviously, as they... Head off into that rather grey afternoon sky over Glasgow's south side. And the black and white of Dunfermline likewise. And as you can see there, the predictions that it would be a disappointing crowd have been proved to have been wrong because uh, there don't seem to be too many spaces on the slopes there. And a crowd of hopefully around the 40,000 mark for this first cup final of the season. So let's go over then to Hamden. Live coverage of the Skull Cup final and our commentary team, Billy McNeil, alongside Jock Brown. Thank you, Dougie. Yes, the special cup final tingle is here, all right. There's no question about that. And you can see from that aerial shot, the very substantial crowd inside the stadium. And I think that estimate from Dougie of 40,000 looks to be about right. And a huge contingent of Dunfermline supporters. They're gathered to our left there on the west terracing behind that goal. They welcomed Andy Rhodes at the warm-up hugely when he came on. And at the other end, of course, Hibbs also bringing a very substantial contingent through. So the banners which normally appear in Cup Final Day, they look at these fans there with the wigs and all the colourful preparations showing there for this match. And it's a new occasion completely for Hibernian after the trials and tribulations of the last couple of seasons. They're here with only one defeat this season behind them, that league match against Rangers. And that apart, they're undefeated and looking to maintain that this afternoon. So the masked pipe bands there in the middle, completing the entertainment pre-match for the supporters, and the tension in the dressing room. No doubt Billy will be incredible. Yes, it's at this time, Doc, when uh, all the doubts have got to be eliminated, but this is when the nerves take play, and often the team that's more relaxed, the team that comes out onto the pitch and that much more relax, easy going fashion are the ones that settle quicker and often the ones who settle more quickly are the team who eventually wins the cup. So these hip supporters are coming here for their sixth League Cup final and the last or the only time they won was in 1972, a 2-1 victory against Celtic. I won't remind Billy McNeil about that one and on other occasions they have certainly struggled more recently. They lost in 1985 to Aberdeen by three goals to nil. Gordon Hunter incidentally the only survivor who'll turn out in this match this afternoon. The Fermin have been in the final only once before in 1949 when they lost to their five neighbours East Fife by three goals to nil. They have done better though in the Scottish Cup winning that 
in the 60s, in 1961 and 68, and losing in 1965. And these Infirmary supporters really have prepared well for this occasion after the difficulties in the league this season. And the big moment approaching, Alec Miller on the left, Chucky Scott on the right, very good friends off the field, leading out their teams. The skipper's Mother McLeod on the left, Molly McCarthy on the right. And you can see the tension on these players' faces as they emerge from the tunnel, welcomed by the supporters. Well, it really has a genuine cup final feel about it. So Alec Miller could scarcely believe this was possible when he was going through the miseries of last season. So a very relaxed looking figure. Five League Cup finals he played in for Rangers and came on, or played in four of them, the winner on every occasion. So these hip supporters with renewed spirits looking forward to this occasion as the presentation party emerges from the tunnel area. Well, Jockey Scott also a player with plenty of experience. He was a winner here in 1976 with Aberdeen and in 1973 with Dundee when his assistant Gordon Wallace scored the only goal of the match against Celtic. So a very relaxed figure. There's Ewell Craig, the president of the Scottish Football League. John McKenzie from the sponsors, the managing director of Aloha Brewery Co. coming behind. Just find Cosma there, being reminded to shake hands with the league president. Sandy Rhodes, the last confirmed and player in the line. So the moment which the Hibs players and the Dunfermline players I'm sure will not be enjoying too much. The Hibs players still waiting to greet this party. There's the three-man set of officials. Brian McGinley in the middle with Ian Elmsley from Aberdeen on the left and Kenny Clark from Paisley on the right. So the presentations continue with the chairman of Dunfermline also there, Mel Rennie, and the chairman of Hibs, Douglas, McC uh, Douglas Chrome is also coming on the line. So John Burridge has been involved in cup finals in England before, but this is his first experience of a Scottish occasion. Little Mickey Weir there in the middle, Keith Wright, Tommy McIntyre, Gareth Evans there. Coming there to Brian Hamilton, who played in the Scottish Cup final for St. Merton in 1987. There's Keith Wright, Tommy McIntyre, who travelled with Scotland to Romania a couple of weeks ago as a backup player. So the presentations are over. Alec Edwards, incidentally, was in that presentation party. He played for Hibs and Infernland, an outstanding player of the 60s and 70s. Well, the sea of green and white presented by these Hibs supporters. So the pipe band still in the middle. It really is a magnificent setting still. And the firm and supporters showing their enthusiasm also for the occasion. They look to be outnumbered somewhat by the Hibs fans through from Edinburgh. But we'll no doubt be able to tell a little bit better when the game starts, the amount of noise which comes from each end. So it looks as though the kickoff may be just a fraction late. The team's now being allowed to break to the respective end. They're going to greet their supporters. So the Hibs team breaking to the right, and there's the lineup. It's the strongest Hibs side, but apart perhaps from the absence of young Mark McGraw, who wasn't fit enough to be considered this afternoon. He's been alternating with Gareth Evans in the number 10 jersey. But apart from that, it's the familiar 4 4 2 lineup which has served Hibs so well this season with Neil Orr and Dave Beaumont, the recent signing from Luton Town, on the bench. So the Dunfermline side also had to be carefully chosen by manager Jockey Scott and he's come up with that final decision. He's left Ian McCall on the bench with Eddie Cunnington. Billy Davis, who missed out with a stomach upset last week against Aberdeen, is back wearing number 10. The experience there of Craig Robertson, wearing six in the middle of the field. And youngster Scott Leach at nine and Chris Sinclair wearing number 11. So big occasions for these young men. 
So undoubtedly one of the key men will be Keith Wright, started his career at Wraith Rovers and then came via Dundee to Hibs. He scored four goals in the League Cup, he needs two more to overtake Mo Johnston for the special prize, the top goal scorer in the tournament. The new lease of life also for little Mickey Weir has scored seven goals this season, having scored a total of only four in the previous three seasons. A brief spell only with Luton Town, just three or four months there, and then returned for £200,000 to Hibs. And undoubtedly the major character in the Nefermann side is Andy Rhodes, the goalkeeper, who performed heroics in the penalty shootouts, which saw the Nefermann through to this stage. Voted the best goalkeeper in Britain by a football magazine, just ahead of Chris Woods, and David Seaman. And this Van Cosma, the Hungarian international, will have a free roll up front. He could be a devastating player in these wide open handed spaces. So Brian McGinley is refereeing his third League Cup final. He was here in 1979 and in 1984. He's also handled four Scottish Cup finals and he's been 15 years on the FIFA list. So all the pre-match formalities have been taken care of and the players waiting for the moment when the whistle goes and they can get down to the serious business of the day. There's this Van Cosmo with young Scott Leach who will start the match for Dunfermline. So a tremendous atmosphere generated by the crowd inside the stadium, these are Dunfermline supporters. So the 46th League Cup final is underway. And there's a first touch here for John Burridge. Hibbs settling into their pattern of play from the start. They have not been notoriously quick starters in their good run this season. They've only scored once in the opening 20 minutes in any match, and that was scored by Tommy McIntyre against Stirling Albion in an earlier round. But that's the only goal they've scored in the opening 20 minutes, which I can tell you that the Nefermann manager, Jockey Scott, sees as being absolutely vital for the match. He is determined that his team is tight and resilient in the opening spell, and that would allow them to develop some confidence, just as they did last week against Aberdeen in that nil-nil draw at East End Park, which did so much for the Fifers' confidence. So here's Pat McGinley, and it's played through the middle where only Nori McCarthy is there for Dunfermline. The so two up front for Hibbs, Gareth Evans and Keith Wright. Four in the middle, Weir, Hamilton, McGinley and McLeod. There's Nori McCarthy, the Dunfermline skipper, playing beside Davy Moyes in central defence. Mitchell's header, there's Brian Hamilton. There's a chance here for Leach. Trying the early shot to test John Burridge. Well, a fine effort there from Leach, showing a lot of composure this early in the match when he had that shooting chance. An interesting opening drop because then Ferman look as though they're keen to make a game of it. Uh, that shot won't have done the, the, the conference any harm. They've seen Hibbs make a little mistake at the back and uh, maybe that'll, that, that will speed up their, their, their build-up. Davy Moyes, they're going to call from Laurie McCarthy. There's a good understanding there between the two central defenders for Dunfermline. So no mishaps there. So for the moment, Scott Leach is on his own through the middle for Dunfermline. Istvan Kozma is shoring up the four-man midfield, making it five at this stage of the match. And that perhaps reflects Dunfermline's determination to make certain they give nothing away in the early stages. So Ray Sharp will take this throw. Helped on by Cosma. Gordon Hunter, the marker there on Scott Leach. Bit of a barge there by Leach on Hunter, giving the free kick to Hibbs. So it'll be taken by Willie Miller. Well won by Sharp, here's Weir. Brian Hamilton made a good run. And Davis was very quick there with that challenge on Weir. Here's Scott Leach. Now Cosma. 
such a fluent runner with the ball at his feet is Van Cosma. Brought down there by Mickey Weir. No, the referee thought not. He ways play on with Hamilton in possession for Hibbs. A long one from Evans to chase. McCarthy showing a good turn of pace there. Here to be caught from the rear by Gareth Evans. There's Evans, who began his career at Coventry City, made his big team debut against Manchester United at Old Trafford, and then moved on to Rotherham and then to Hibs. So the free kick will be taken by Ray Sharp. Cosma did well again, a little head flick on. Hunter going in behind Leach. Well, it's a very busy, packed midfield area at this stage of the match, Billy. Yes, but um, impressively, uh, Dunfermline have started well, and, and Cosmas caused a little bit of bother in the areas. Little flicks into Leach, and Leach is a difficult little little lad to knock off the ball at times. I think that to whatever else, Dunfermline is going to have a go today. Well, the players before the match certainly appear to relish the opportunity to forget the league worries. Here's Davy Moyes. Mother McLeod judging that well to give Hibbs the throw. Mitchell's early cross. Mickey Weir's the only Hibbs player. He's there, managed to get his head to that. Well, quite remarkable. The smallest player in the field by far getting an end of that Graham Mitchell cross. So there's Willie Miller. will take the throw. Weir's been left in space. Fighting away from Chris Sinclair. Good determined tackling by the Dunfermline youngster. His father, Jackie Sinclair, played here in 1965 for Dunfermline in the Scottish Cup final against Celtic. Crowded area at the near post there. Mother McLeod's in the thick of all that, so is Keith Wright. Turned back by Tom Wilson. And you had to be quick to prevent a corner kick. Keith Wright there, showing a little bit of movement inside the penalty area for him for about the first time in the match. Tom Wilson picking out Cosma. Good play by Leach, he's very skillful on his left side in particular. The gap opening up ahead of him. Tommy McIntyre did well there on the ground to retrieve the situation. Now Mother McLeod. Evans, Hamilton, now Mitchell, resisting the challenge from McWilliams. Right away in a very sure-footed fashion by Nori McCarthy, but there are signs here that Hibbs are warming to the task. Evans turning well, that's a good effort! Oh, well taken by Andy Rose, the kind of save which is so important to the Fellman early in the match. But Gareth Evans here had but one thought in mind when he received that throw. He turned inside and that is hit with tremendous power. Marvellous turn, Jock, and uh, great power in the shot, but again confidently dealt with by Andy Rhodes. But uh, Hibbs in the last few minutes have started to knock the ball about with an awful lot more purpose and look very, very determined to, to ensure that this trophy goes back to Easter Road. Here's Sinclair. Has to overcome early match nerves now, Nicholas Sinclair. And in the trouble on that occasion, there's Mickey Weir. Now Wright makes one of those excellent runs wide. We are sending it across, and it's well taken out of the air by Andy Rhodes. Now Rhodes has played in the League Cup final in England for Oldham against Nottingham Forest. He lost on that occasion by one goal to nil. Tom Wilson there receiving the pass, won a cup with his medal for St Mirren in 1987. He was a teammate then of Brian Hamilton, who's in the Hibs midfield. Here's Wilson again. It's well won by McIntyre. 
McGinley and the McWilliams tangling. The result is a throw to Hibbs. Oh, some very interesting combinations of players here have been teammates before. Craig Roberts and Keith White were teammates at Wraith Rovers. Keith White and Derek McWilliams were teammates at Dundee. And Murder McLeod and Davy Moyes were together at Celtic. Add to that. The other 21 internationals, Willie Miller and Ray Sharp. So opponents who've been teammates in the past, an interesting number there. Here's Willie Miller. But just beyond McCarthy. Davis, which is played at that space on the right for McWilliams. This is Cosma. Playing it into space for Leach. Gordon Hunter is very quick. The Hibbs marker there for Leach. He's asking rather a lot of Derek McWilliams, who had the last touch there. Well, McWilliams, who was so effective playing up front for Falkirk in their promotion-winning campaign of last season, now playing wide on the right side of midfield. It's both sides, Jock, and that's in fact have uh, adapted a 4-4-2 system. Interestingly enough, Murder McLeod has pushed further forward further forward than I saw him in the semi-final um, almost as if he's determined to get in at the back post um, I would think that Hibbs shortly will start to play balls into Mickey Weir's feet to see if he can take it to the, the Berman defence and, and, and put them under that little bit of pressure Miller picking out Evans Moyes challenging fiercely it's back with Miller there's McCarthy Cosmo put under pressure instantly. It's well won in midfield by Hibbs. Here's Weir. Now Martin McLeod looking for a shooting chance. That was deflected off McCarthy. Well, the referee doesn't agree with that. He's given a goal kick. Martin McLeod clearly thought it should have been a corner. Well, Hibbs would certainly welcome Martin McLeod getting into these shooting positions around the penalty area. He scored the winner in the 1982 League Cup final for Celtic. So a man upon whom Hibbs will be depending a great deal with his vast experience. You know, started at Dumbarton, then Celtic for nine seasons, then Borussia Dortmund. Clumsy challenge there by McIntyre on Leach. It's a free kick to hit to Dunfermline. Well, it's already abundantly clear that this is going to be a very difficult final for either side to win. Any thoughts that Dunferno are here to make up the numbers and simply enjoy the occasion? Certainly can be completely dispelled at this stage. Here's Billy Davis with the free kick. Looking for Davy Moyes in the box. McLeod's clearance and Hibbs showing due respect there, pulling everyone back to face the ball at that free kick. Sharp playing it forward. There's Gordon McLeod, now Hamilton. Brian Hamilton and Pat McGinley are the engine room of the Hibs midfield. That's a fine pass. Here's Evans again. Breaks back there for Weir. Hamilton. Evans is still out there on the right. This is a good position for Hibbs. Headed from Ricky Weir! And the best goal attempt of the match so far, a header from little Mickey Weir. And the Furman breathe easily again, but this was very close indeed. Gareth Evans has stayed out there on the right, letting this in. No one appeared to pick up Mickey Weir's run. That was a very powerful header into the side netting. It was a, a move typical of Hibbs drop. They've started to get the passes, they've started to put them together. Mickey Weir's wandering just a little bit. He's not holding, he's not holding that wide position. There he is in the middle. To knock that one just inches past. Um, that is the nearest we've had to go yet, Joe. Well, Mickey Weir's confidence in front of goal, quite remarkable in view of the lean time he's had in recent seasons for Hibs in that department. Here's Keith Wright. Supported instantly by Mother McLeod behind. There's Mitchell. Headed away by Moyes. Miller was put under pressure there all the time by Istvan Kozma. Davis helping it on, there's Leach. He's got a good touch on that left foot. 
Played forward by Miller, there's McCarthy, and straight to McGinley. A little bit untidy for the moment in midfield. Here's Graham Mitchell. Intercepted by Robertson, and back it goes to Tom Wilson. We're certainly at the sparring stage in the match, but these sides have been set up, particularly the firm with safety in mind early on. So every passing minute with the score level will suit the Fernland. McIntyre's head up, it's back with Graham Mitchell. Plenty of movement ahead from Wright and from Evans. Confident play there by Tom Wilson. Well-timed tackle that by Miller. Chris Sinclair controlling the ball well in his chest, but Miller was very swiftly in with that tackle. Sinclair inside, here's Leach, screening the ball well from Hunter. Here's Davis. And now Tom Wilson. Well, I did, I did mention that that uh, Hibbs end of the pitch was very crowded indeed. The supporters are packed in there behind John Burridge. And I can tell you that the news we have from outside is that there are two or 3,000 Hibbs fans still trying to get in. No doubt Alec Miller will want to know where they all go on a Saturday afternoon. But certainly supporting the team well this afternoon. So quarter of an hour gone and still no scoring in the Skull Cup final. Patient play from Dunfermline, the eventual pass from Tom Wilson, asking too much of Scott Leach. Cosma now has pushed forward to join Scott Leach in a more orthodox double striking position. Clumsy challenge there by McCarthy on Evans. Gareth Evans is a very elusive runner up front. He'll be testing these the Furman defenders to the full. It's back now with Willie Miller. The break of the ball falls for McGinley in midfield. Miller has stayed forward supporting his attack. Keith Wright's layoff, there's McGinley, such incredible running power, but Sharp did just enough for Dunfermline. Miller playing that on, but McLeod challenging well, and there was no one coming in on the far post there, but McLeod was offside. Well, that's a very interesting feature, that, Billy, as you mentioned, Mother McLeod playing very far forward, caught offside there. Yes, um, it's almost as if Alec Miller has asked Mickey Weir to play a more deep line role, and you hear you see Murdo push right forward gets up there, I, I think, uh, I don't think he was offside. Um, but it's interesting that Murdo has pushed very, very far upfield and, and Mickey Weir's taken a, a more deep midfield role. So manager Alec Miller trying to cause some disruption to the film and defensive planning with that little bit of a tactical change. Hips have certainly developed a very solid 4-4-2 formation. John Burridge there with lots of instructions for his teammates. And Graham Mitchell had lots of time there, but he decided to take no chances. He couldn't be entirely certain how closely he was being challenged by an opponent. Keith Wright back helping in defence there for Hibbs. Played in by Sinclair. Robertson trying to help it on. He's got another chance to use Chris Sinclair here on that talented left foot. Out of luck there, the youngster coming inside. Mickey Weir trying to break clear for Hibbs. He's brought down in the end by McWilliams. An angry reaction from Mickey Weir. Well, a little debate going on. Mother McLeod steps across and escorts his teammate away. I think that's just a little bit of nerves there. There's not a lot in it in actual fact. It's a typical forward challenge and back and down comes Mickey Weir. And I, and I think Mickey Weir just showing his anxiety and he's, he, he's cut final nerves there. 
So Derek McWilliams was spoken to there by referee McGinley. He's just trying to calm things down. The flick on came from Evans. Moyes is quick enough to cut off Keith Wright. £42,500 from Shrewsbury Town, Moyes cost. Evans across to Hamilton. Again, a patient build up from Hibbs. Here's Weir. Evans with a return pass. Again, there was challenged well by Leach and a little bit of leaning there by Murdoch McLeod on Derek McWilliams, trying to gain an advantage and win possession. Free kick it is to Dunfermline. Murdoch McLeod getting some instructions from Alec Miller on the bench. There's Moyes with the free kick. Well won by McIntyre. Cosma tried to pick out Derek McWilliams. Little throw to Hibbs to be taken by former Hamilton Ackies defender, Graham Mitchell. Now Jockey Scott there with some earnest instructions for his team. Miller to Weir. Good challenge that by Sharp. He's released Sinclair in good space on the left. There's Cosma. Leach was coming in the far post area. So, no scoring as yet in the Skull Cup final. 20 minutes gone. The Cathy's header. Beginning rather underneath that. Miss Hamilton. Rather hopeful ball that from McIntyre, giving possession to Dunfermline. Sinclair looking for that run from Billy Davis. Couldn't take the ball as he was going forward. So Brian Hamilton won that Scottish Cup medal in 1987, and he's still a very young man, only 24 years old at this stage. There's Greg Robertson, the second spell at Dunfermline after that three-season spell with Aberdeen. Hunter's clearance, longest-serving player in the Hibs ranks this afternoon. Signed in 1983 from Musselburgh Windsor. Leach offered the movement, which Sharp was asking for. Denied the chance to play the ball across, though. It's gone out, and the last touch was by Leach. Well, Leach asking the referee for some help, which he's not going to get. Evans playing it back. There's Miller. Moyes returning it. Commanding header there at the back from Gordon Hunter. The game for the moment still a bit ragged and tense in the middle of the field. No one getting a chance to put his foot in the ball and start spraying passes around. Moy is going up well again. Here's Cosma. Sinclair making for the byline. The ball was out of play, I think. The flag has been raised on the near side. But Sinclair has shown a very good touch on his left foot. Yes, it's interesting enough, he's such a young lad, Jock, and uh, he seems confident enough to take people on. And I think this game today is going to be unlocked by someone who's prepared to go, go at these opposing defence, take them on round about the box and maybe get in a good shot or a good, a good finishing cross. Interesting enough, I think Alec Miller's trying to, to push Mickey Weir away into a much wider position. He's coming in field a little bit and he's just getting mixed up in that midfield battle for the moment. Reach for the header. Cosmo got a touch, but the cover is there for Hibbs. Header from Wilson. Here's Craig Robertson put under pressure immediately by Pat McGinley. Well, opposing sides now recognise that when they're playing against Hibbs, they'll have 
lot of pressure applied by Hamilton and McGinley in the centre of midfield. Two young players with tremendous engines, they can run all day. Good layoff that from Leach, but Hamilton again showing his energy getting back to cut off Cosma. Hamilton now looking for space in the middle of the field as John Burridge offers instructions and takes a short pass back from McIntyre. Good header there from Moyes once again. Now Mitchell. Keith Wright operating right through the middle for the moment for Hibbs. Frequently operates wide in the left up front, but he's staying in the centre. Coming for this one, though. Followed across by McCarthy. That's good play by Wilson. Willing to pull the ball down at his instep in a cup final. Experienced player now, 30 years old. Cost £71,000 when he joined the club from St. Merlin in 1989. Good running there by Davis and by Leach. Cosmo goes off on the right. That was cut off well by McIntyre. Now Miller trying to release Evans on the right flank. Good running again by the hip striker. Trying to get the better of McCarthy. So a throw for Hibs to exploit right at the corner flag. And the referee's given a free kick against Gareth Evans, it appears, for lowering his head too much. Well, Evans certainly has looked lively up front for Hibs in the early stages of the match. Still haven't seen a great deal of his striking partner, Keith Wright, though. Pushing by Hunter and Leach. Well, at this stage, Billy, I reckon that uh, Jockey Scott, the film manager, might not be at all displeased with the way things have gone. No, I think he'll be the happier of the two managers, Jock, because he's seen he, he, his team escape from a near miss, and they've settled down now and they're taking the game two heads at the moment. They're sharp with the free kick. Here they come off Keith Ryan, I reckon that'll be a corner kick, yes. That's the decision of the linesman and referee. So more work for Hibs defensively, and they pulled every player into the penalty box. There is no Hibs player outside the penalty area at this stage. Sinclair's corner, Burridge comes to claim it. Well, that's the kind of catch which inspires confidence in his defence. Taking plenty of time because he needs to allow his teammates to make their way upfield. Well, I think this may finish up with John Burridge again. Well, a short throw out from Burridge to McIntyre, taking hips nowhere really in the end. to Hamilton, he spotted Mitchell in space on the near side here's McIntyre and McGinley the marking is very tight among the defending players whenever Hibs have possession, that's what's making life so difficult for Hibs coming forward this is better though, space here if McLeod can keep this in play, that's a good turn of pace by the 33 year old Mother McLeod well, he was hoping for a corner, but that really was a forlorn hope, a clear goal kick there. Well, some life in these 33-year-old legs, all right. Still a very good player, Jock, and he's got the ability to score from outside the box. But uh, interestingly enough, I, I think at the minute, we'd like to see Hibbs, or Hibbs would like to see Mickey Weir accept himself just a little bit more. He, he's just dropped back into a midfield role. He's not putting himself in any position where he can pick up the ball and run it to Dunferman. And at the moment, Dunferman seem to be able to, to give just as good as they're, they're taking. And that very good turn by Scott Leach, got of a rash tackle by Tommy McIntyre to give Dunferman another free kick. 
McIntosh had a splendid season in central defence for Hibs. Came from Aberdeen on the last day of 1986, the same day as Graham Mitchell was signed from Hamilton. Wilson's free kick, there's Davy Moyes. Chance for Leach. A difficult chance, all right, but by the highest standards, he had a really good opportunity there to test John Burridge. It's a long free kick. This is where David Moyes is important to Dunfermline because he's good in there, he's prepared to attack it. But look at that, a little bit of slight marking there and could easily have been punished. Evans again looking for Keith Wright. Sharp will play it back. One of the amazing things, though, I think, I believe it most onlookers, is the fact that Keith Wright so far in the match has been struggling to make an impact. Any reason for that? Well, I think it's it, it's all about, although Hibs are prepared to pass the ball, I honestly think that Mickey Weir has got to push himself right on, out onto that touchline where it, he'll either attract the left-back drop, allow passes in behind him into Keith Wright, or he'll get passes into his feet and have a go at the full-back. But uh, at the moment, Dunferman have worked very, very hard, and... Norrie McCarthy and David Moyes have, have handled the uh, key threat very well. Wright did well on that occasion and got across Davy Moyes. You can see Moyes shaking his head there in frustration at losing that high ball. It must be just about the first one he's lost in the match so far. Well, the old stadium is still the place to be in cup final day, there's no doubt about that. That's Cosma. Well mopped up there by McIntyre, remained very calm. Now Keith Wright, one of those positions which he tends to exploit so well. Taking on Tom Wilson, that's a good cross, just too close to Andy Rhodes. Well, Wright will have been happy to have that bit of involvement. Good running again by Hamilton. Pushed from the rear there by Sharp on Weir. So some backtracking required for young Chris Sinclair. There was a challenge which incurred the wrath of referee McGinley. Sharp on Weir. Interception there by Wilson. Here's Craig Robertson. He's in trouble. They really don't get time at all in the centre of the field against Hamilton and McGinley of Hibbs. And some carelessness there, giving a snap chance to Keith Wright. Well, he was disappointed that came to his right foot, but he's not quite so deadly. But Raymond Sharp in possession, McCarthy inside. Peter loses his bearings for a second, and Keith Wright could have well have punished in Fernand. Very careless defending job, but it's... There it is, it's on his wrong foot, and he, it, rather than kick it up the field with his right foot, he tries a risky pass. Uh, fortunately for, for Dunferman, it came to Keith Wright's weaker foot, and over the bar it went. Well, Keith Wright needing two goals this afternoon to steal from Morris Johnston of Rangers, the sponsor's prize of a holiday worth £2,000. Carelessness again from Sharp. Picked up there by Evans. Hunter playing a long ball through the middle. And the news we have from just outside the stadium is that the crowd of Hibs fans who can't get in has grown. The estimate now is about 4,000. So it wasn't made all ticket, the match, just the main stand. And the Hibs fans wanted it one particular end of the field, obviously. The police will not be happy to have any mixing of supporters, although I... I doubt if there would be any difficulty. So the Feldman have a free kick. Keith Wright retreats for Hibbs. There's Derek McWilliams. The interception by McGinley. Return by McCarthy. Well, a careless one back from Sharp. And it was caught there by Keith Wright. The goalkeeper's in trouble, took a hefty knock there from Keith Wright, and referee McGinley very sensibly holds the play up instantly with the goalkeeper on the ground, and this could be tragic for the Fernland. Here's Wright going in there, Rhodes got there first, and Wright came careering through on top of the goalkeeper. That looked as though it may well have been a very sore one indeed. 
it comes from a slack back pass again Andy Rhodes reads the situation very very well and Keith Wright just slides into him Jock it's one of these dangerous incidents where we could have a serious injury here Andy Rhodes has come out Keith Wright oh maybe protects himself more than more than anything else but uh, let's hope that there's nothing undue wrong with Andy Rhodes well I wonder there just looking at that again it looked to me as though Keith Wright may have lost his right foot as he came forward because he did appear to come careering through there when he wasn't going to get to the ball and I don't think that was out of malice I think he may just have lost his right foot the studs on the turf as he came onto that it would be interesting to see that again because there's no doubt in my mind that that wasn't malicious it was very unfortunate indeed and if we see this again let's test that again Ray Sharp certainly will be very upset about his pass back Keith Wright coming to this now Andy Rhodes read it well came out now if you just watch Keith Wright as he comes to the ball here his right foot appears to go from under him just about this point here and there's the slide on the right foot I don't think that was deliberate at all no I agree entirely with you Jock I think what happened is that uh, Keith Wright realised the goalkeeper's beaten him to the ball and, and started to, to, to pull out of the challenge unfortunately he slipped and he slid right into the goalkeeper let's hope that uh, there's nothing untoward wrong with Andy Rhodes because once again he's saved in fair one so Jockey Scott having a chat with one of the senior professionals Craig Robertson about what might be required in the event that Andy Rhodes is not fit to continue well, it's a very sad moment this Andy Rhodes a tough determined character he will not be interested in leaving the field early you can be absolutely certain about that Pip Yates the Rutherland physio has taken plenty of time and referee McGinley to his credit also has allowed even more time than normal the usual customary respect shown for goalkeepers because the last thing anyone wants to see is a side to gain some kind of advantage because the goalkeeper is unable to perform normally. Well, he's on his feet now, that's a healthy sign. And Andy Rhodes going back. We'll get a great reception. And the Thurman supporters will be mightily relieved to see their hero back on his feet. It looks as though he may have some very severe bruising to contend with after the match tonight, but that'll be the last thing in his mind right now so long as he has normal mobility he'll be happy the drop ball restarts the match with a chance for McWilliams on the break picking up the clearance from Mitchell and once again a snap chance for Scott Leach on his right foot the weaker one but there was a possibility there of Leach doing some damage as McWilliams pulled this across the danger area Leach taking it first time ball just came a little bit awkwardly to him Jock it really hit his shin more than anything else but it's a good ball in and there is Scott Leach on to it again it's on perhaps his weaker foot but uh, Dunfermline bit by bit are bringing himself into this game and they're threatening him so back it goes now to McGinley space on the right for Miller showing good control and the pressure there from Sinclair trying to play that through for Keith Wright McGinley was caught there, a high boot from Billy Davis, and referee McGinley, well, rather surprisingly for my money, is going to have a little bit of paperwork here. The yellow card going to be shown to Billy Davis. Well, I wonder if this is perhaps a shade harsh. I can't remember Davis being involved much before. It was a high challenge, but the ball was in the air. I think he's been a bit unfortunate, in actual fact. I don't think he saw the house player and went definitely went for the ball, but Brian McGinley's perhaps just a little bit perturbed as one or two fouls have crept into the game and he's out to impress his authority on it Robertson's headed out here's Graham Mitchell appearance by Craig Robertson Hunter's pass back well, Gordon Hunter will certainly have very bad memories of a 3-0 defeat against Aberdeen in the 85 final chance now to change all that around if he can be part of a winning hip side this afternoon well that kind of determination will help Mother McLeod to Keith Wright clearance reaches McGinley now Mitchell disappointing ball in there from Graham Mitchell Billy Davis showing some very good control the 
this again, switching play to the far side, picking out Sinclair. Testing Willie Miller, it's good running by Sinclair. And some determined work carried out by Willie Miller, backtracking all the way with Chris Sinclair. 20 years old, young Sinclair. Well, what a great ball this was from Billy Davis. Sinclair taking it on the run, testing the pace of Willie Miller, making there for the byline. And it was deflected off Miller for the corner. Played in by Cosma this time. One by Wright at the near post. And Sinclair again. Headed by Wilson. So Chris Sinclair again backtracking. Well, that's a very careless one back towards his goalkeeper Andy Rhodes. Well, Chris Sinclair will be disappointed with that. Son of a Scotsman, but born in Sheffield. Rhodes appears to have shaken off that knock, at least for the moment. Not it stiffen up later on, but should be able to see the game out. And Tommy McIntyre has gone forward, so has Gordon Hunter. There's Mickey Weir's corner. Headed away by Cosma. And a free kick has been given for a challenge by Brian Hamilton. It's a free kick to Infernland. It's interesting, Joe. Both teams are bringing everyone back there, and when that ball is knocked out, there's no one, there's no one up there to to collect it. But uh, so the way the game has developed must be must be pleasing, Jockey Scott, because bit by bit, the Inferno have crept into this game, and they're, they're real posing a real threat to to Hibs now. Hibs over the last five or ten minutes haven't really been in the game as a, a, a real effective force. Well, here's Andy Rhodes going for a little sortie upfield. They'll have to get back quickly. Here's Mickey Weir who caused the damage to Rangers in the semi-final when Andy Gordon was caught out of his goal. Rhodes is back now. Led in by Miller. It's found its way there to Evans. A fine tackle by McWilliams. Well, such an important intrusion there defensively by Derek McWilliams. He certainly saved the day there for Dunfermline. The ball whipped across here by Willie Miller. You'll see that falls here for Evans. Look how quickly there McWilliams made the challenge. Marvellous saving challenge, wasn't it? Here's Weir operating. Well down inside now. Miller going out there on the overlap. Another cross looking for Keith Wright. There's McKinley. Well, you see how hard he was working there to keep that down. It would have been very easy to balloon that over the crossbar. But in the attempt to keep it down, he's pulled it wide of the target. It's a good ball into the middle, good clearing header, but there, there's Pat McGinley on the edge of the box, didn't quite get hold of it, and then it goes past the post. But this has been a good concerted spell of pressure by Hibbs. Tell him using Willie Miller well on that right flank to come up on the outside of Mickey Weir. There's one of McLeod forcing his way away from McWilliams. Gareth Evans takes over, and McLeod again. Boys under pressure doing well. So it's sharp. Oh, that's good play by Miller. Mitchell playing it in there for Keith Wright. He takes it so well with his left foot in the turn like that. McGinley behind him. That's great play by McGinley. And eventually run out of space and options. Well, he's looking upset about the fact he didn't get a free kick, but I must confess I saw nothing wrong with any challenge. No, he, he's unfortunate here. He, he tries to send the defender the wrong way. He tries to get inside there, but loses the ball and then goes down. Referee was exactly right. Started with Blackpool, Pat McGinley. Came back four years ago to Easter Road. Took a couple of seasons to break his way into the first team. So Andy Rhodes not able to take these goal kicks with any kind of comfort. That's beyond Wilson for right. The early ball played inside. Evans was there, so as we are. A chance undoubtedly for Hibbs. They've stepped up the pace in the last five minutes or so. And they're testing the firm to the full. Pulled across well here by Keith Wright. Evans was trying to control the ball in the turn, screening that. There was Mickey Weir, and that was an excellent chance. 
Yes, it's again an indication of Keith Wright's ability to get into that inside left channel. Gareth Edward doesn't control it. Mickey Weir had just get underneath the ball a little bit. Very definite chance. So the goal kick's been taken now by Davy Moyes. Andy Rhodes still in some discomfort. Here's Istvan Cosma. Tommy McIntyre did just enough to force the ball wide. Here's McWilliams. That's a good tackle by McGinley. He has McLeod available inside. McLeod has the determination to run away from McWilliams. Here's Evans. Over on the far side is Weir. Good flowing move this from Hibbs. Weir taking on sharp to the byline. Very good defending by the fullback. He was very quick on the recovery. Good defensive play by Dan Feldman, John, but again an indication that Mickey Weir in that position is a real threat to defences because he's got the ability to take fullbacks on and to put good balls in. So the 45 minutes of the first half almost over, apart from injury time. Feels there for a handball, very faint ones against Craig Robertson as he lashes the ball to safety. Deep inside the hips half. by Robertson, here's McIntyre. Wilson's header inside, well, he's fortunate, I think, to pick up a teammate, Craig Robertson, with that. Robertson apologising there to Scott Leach, the seconds ticking away to the end of the 45 minutes, but remember, there was a stoppage of almost three minutes for treatment to Andy Rhodes in the first half. So referee McGinley will undoubtedly allow plenty of time at the end of this first half. Good play there involving Miller and Weir. Now right. Fine defending once again by Derek McWilliams. Well, he really has operated extremely well in the defensive sense in that right midfield role. Blocked there by Hunter. Ryan Hamilton. Leach trying to link with Billy Davis. playing the long ball forward, McCarthy was in the way time here for the Fernman fell between both Leach and McWilliams there's Mitchell chested down there by Wright trying to find Evans Tommy McIntyre is the covering player for Hibbs Trying to find Murder McLeod on the left. You put Wilson under pressure. Well, McLeod certainly forced Wilson to play the ball. Could have induced an error. So Rhodes still preferring to throw the ball. He'll get some more intensive treatment, I think, during the interval, Andy Rhodes. Well, we haven't had any goals in the first half, Billy, but there's been no lack of interest. No, it's been, a, it's been an exciting game in many, many ways, Jock, with, as far as I'm concerned, uh, this man playing a big part for Dunfermline because he came out, read the situation, it could have caused him all sorts of problems. Let's hope he's not in too much difficulty. So Andy Rose limping off to get some well-earned treatment, but a lot of hard thinking to be done at half-time by both managers. I'm sure they'll be coming up with some tactical ploys for the second half. Hibbs perhaps came closest in that first half with a couple of efforts from Mickey Weir in particular, one header into the side netting but apart from that it was a very evenly fought contest with the growing in confidence the longer the game remained all even at nil nil so i'm sure we're in for a fascinating second half and it will be interesting to hear the comments of our studio panel who are with dougie donnelly yes hopefully it, it will jock it's a good first half actually no goals perhaps uh, gordon jim but um, bags of incident anyway what would you, what would you say to yeah, it's a gordon? very open game a bit disappointing amount of actual chances that we've had but it's it's a good entertaining open game yeah you certainly can't tell that there's the virtue of the gulf of the premier division between the two sides can you yeah i think a neutral looking at that game wouldn't know that uh dunfermline at the bottom of the league and hibs were further up but uh dunfermline have worked very hard for the, for that and i'm sure jockey scott will be a lot happier than Alec miller mm. you've been up and down out the chair a few times jim haven't you <laughs> dunfermline are actually <laughs> coping very well <coughs> i just I go back to the, the confidence that's been building over the last two weeks do you 
Um, really impressed with the front two. They're really working hard uh, not to allow the, the, the back four of Hibs to play good quality passes to midfield. Mm -hmm. They're closing them down quickly. And uh, the boy Leach, in uh, the first half on the television, uh, has looked a, a quality player. He has indeed. They must be a little bit worried, perhaps, about the amount of space that Hibs are getting on the right-hand side, though, where Raymond Sharp's not having one of his better days. Mm -hmm. Raymond's a, a quite a nervy type player, you know. Uh, he'll he'll be the ones that would have probably felt the pressure all week. Mm -hmm. Whether you know he's recovered from a, a, a long-term injury, will he be in the team? Will he get the medal? You know, he'll be wanting that medal. And um, if if I was Alec Muller at this time, I would push Mickey Weir further forward to to expose that that the weakness just now. But Raymond's a uh, he's a big lad now, so he'll get a good talking to you at half time. Yeah. He's a good uh, player. I mean, we pointed out before the game, he's, 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 he's a good player, but he's just, he seems, as you say, just a little bit nervy today. He made a couple of mistakes early on, which obviously hasn't done much for his confidence either. That's right. The whole of Dunfermline side is a bit inexperienced. The left side mm. uh, is a bit inexperienced. You've got young Chris Sinkler who put the ball out <coughs> for a, a corner just after it, so the tension maybe getting to him. Hey, we're doing okay here, you know, let's, uh, let's keep it going and they maybe get a wee bit mm. lackadaisical. But, um, no, they'll get through it. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with the performance of Dunfermline. Mm. I think, uh, myself, if I was the, the... Well, being in neutral, I'd be more happy with the Dunfermline side than the Hibs side at this present time. Yeah. Hibs, though, threatening definitely down that right-hand side. God. Mickey Weir's equipping in good crosses. Willie Miller's getting a lot of the ball, too, isn't he? Yeah, I think, as Jim says, the young boy uh, Sharp had a dodgy five or ten minutes there that, that Hibs capitalised on. And, I'm very impressed with the boy Miller, he's getting forward well and he's getting good crosses in which are causing the Ferland problems and mm. I think that's where they're going to get their goal if they get one. Mm. And Murdo McLeod looks to be a very important player too. Yeah, Mur Murdo's just uh, playing away there, his usual self and he's, he's getting all the boys going and he's, he's had a good first half. Yeah, he's getting forward as well. Let's take a look back then at some of the incidents in that uh, first half. Scott Leach, as Jim said, uh, the young Dunfermline striker, looked very confident indeed. In fact, early on, he got in a, a snapshot, looked up and then virtually tried to, to chip the keeper, which is an indication of just uh, how good he was feeling about playing in his first Hamden final. I think the boy was obviously unlucky there. He saw, he saw the goal out uh, off his line there. And he showed a lot of skill and vision just trying to chip over him. But I've, as Jim says, I've been very impressed with the young boy in the first half. He's done very well. That's right. He and then just he before he struck the ball, he, he had the confidence to take a look as well, did he? That's yeah. right. This is a Gareth Evans shot, which uh, brought out a very good save from Andy Rhodes. Yeah, that was a great effort. Andy Rhodes made it look that easy, but uh, a great turn by, by Evans and a, and a great hit, really. Gareth Evans, very quick. Dougie gets in, himself into a lot of, of good goal scoring positions. Mm. If he just had a, a little more, in my opinion, a little more composure in the box, um, he, he would end up uh, scoring 10, 15 goals a season. Mm. This is the Mickey Weir header, I think, coming up now, and uh, a little bit unlucky perhaps that came off the side netting. Yeah, I think that was the closest thing in the first half. I think defenders tend to leave Mickey alone, thinking that he's, he's that way, he won't get a header. But as, he, as you've seen here, he's stolen there and, and no demarked on him. He was very unlucky. Another good ball for the wide there. Oh, that's right. It was a bit like spot the ball, Dougie, with the haircut that uh, <laughs> Mickey Weir's got, you know. Was, uh, we weren't sure what way the, the head would go one way or the ball would go the other. This is uh, Raymond Sharp's uh, very dangerous pass along the boss there. I'm sure Jockey Scott has something to say about that. Gave Kirky Price a real chance there, didn't he? The, the, uh, and for, well, unfortunately for Dom Ferman, it did come to Keith's uh, right foot. If it had been on the other foot, Keith's an excellent finisher, and I'm sure on his other foot, at least he would have got on target. The important thing, uh, is to get on target, make the goalkeeper make a save, Dougie, which uh, Keith didn't do there. That's right. Talking of keepers, a uh, nasty injury uh, for, for Andy Rosa. It certainly looked to be at the beginning. Happily, seems to have recovered, but uh, as Jock said in commentary, I think accidental, Gordon. Yeah, that's right. The young boy shot with a, a short back, pass back there. Right, had every intention of going for the ball, and, and as you say, uh, just before it, he, he slipped, really no intention of injuring the, the goalkeeper there at all. He was just very unlucky. Yeah. Great goalkeeper, Doug. Very brave. Yes, it was, yeah. It's like having an extra sweeper, you know, or having a sweeper. You know, terrible, Raymond Sharp, terrible pass from Raymond. You know, the lad's just got to settle down now, and mm. it's past, it's history. He's got to settle down, but terrible. Andy Rhodes' reflections, brilliant. Yeah, reflections. This is a Scott Leach snapshot here again at the, at the other end, which I think actually came off his shin guard. I think it was a bit goal, unlucky there. I think it yeah. sort of zimmed off the, the grass here, and I think it came to him a lot quicker than it, than it actually did. Mm. This is a great saving tackle here from uh, from Derek McWilliams that uh, really yeah. saved the jerseys, didn't Boy it? Boy McWilliams done very well getting getting back there. They've had a couple at the far post and he's and he's been back there as you see here. A great tackle. Missed a lot at the start of the season because he was in dispute with Falkirk, but he's worked hard to get into the team, Doug, and, and mm. that was terrific cover. Terrific. That shows a good team spirit just now. That's right. 
shot. And Finland defence maybe just caught a little bit there for uh, for that shot, wasn't it? With the boy right, Dombell getting to getting his, his foot around it, and Mickey was unfortunate that it bounced a little bit high for a minute on his on his left foot, which isn't his his better foot. Mm -hmm. I've written down here that there was just the one booking in the first half for Billy Davis, which seemed to be a, a little bit harsh. I perhaps. thought it was very unfortunate. I think. Uh, he never really seen the boy coming out his blind side, and I, th and I thought it was very unfortunate. Yeah. It was his first tackle, I think, as he said. That's right. But over the piece, Brian McGinley, which I think we would agree is probably our, our best referee in, in Scotland, Jim. Yes, yeah, like first class. He, um, he's up to date with the, the modern football, and he, he he has a conscience about the game, and uh, totally fair. I agree about the booking. I thought maybe if Brian has made one mistake the first half, uh, it's been the booking. I thought it was a wee bit. I think it could maybe. Billy Davis is not a dirty type player. Um, he could have let him off for that way. Well, might, might have sufficed, yeah. yeah. So, well, the pieces we agree probably done Fenland happier than Hibbs with it, the set of play so far. Uh, possible changes, Gordon, in the, the way Hibbs approach it, perhaps? I think they've got to get Mickey Weir forward a lot more. I think that, that I think in the first half, definitely, that's where they caused them Fenland most problems. And if they get Mickey forward and the boy behind them, uh, Willie Miller, falling up there, I think they could cause problems there, but Mickey's got to go forward, get to the byline and get the crosses in. Yeah, and from the Dunfermline point of view, I mean, are they going to be happy just to <coughs> soak up the pressure and look to counter-attack, Jim? There's no pressure in them, do you say? There's no pressure. If if a defender kicks a ball long just as a clearance, the fans will accept that today. If the Hibs ones kick it long just to get rid of the ball, the, the Hibs fans won't accept that. They're, they're expecting them to come here three, four, nothing. Mm. So there's no pressure mm. on Dunfermline. Um, there's got to be a lot of talking to Raymond Sharp at half time just to calm him down, settle him down. He's a good honest lad. Uh, just calm down a bit, Sharpie. Keep playing, get the ball moving, play the way you're facing. Um, get, um, mm. Keep pushing forward, get into the Hibs box, get forward, make them make the mistakes. Mm. The longer it goes, it suits them firmly. I think you've yeah. got to give the boy due as well. I think a couple of mistakes they did make, I think five or ten minutes before the end of the half, they had a couple of good uh, saving tackles on there. Yeah. on the byline there, so hopefully his, his confidence is back and he can get on with things. Yeah. Yeah. What about Norrie McCarthy and Davy Moyes, though, Gordon, in the centre of Dunfermline defence? <coughs> they're, they're looking very comfortable at the moment, aren't they? Especially early doors, I think the boy Wright nearly, never really got into the game, and I think it's really because they two are very dominant in there, and, and they've, they've snuffed them out, really, for most of the game. The boy, uh, his partner up front, um, Gareth Evans. Gareth Evans has made yeah. great runs. I think that's caused them more problems than maybe the boy Wright has. Yeah. Any change in the prediction? You still going for Hibs? Yeah, I, th I think Hibs will, I think as I say, if, if they get the ball, ball to make a wheel, then I think you'll create something and, and they should get on the end of one. Yeah. Don't expect you to change your mind, Jim. No, I think the, the, the Fellman's midfield are closing. The, the quality, the service to the strikers isn't coming. Uh, to the hip strikers at the the Dunfermline midfield, Craig Robertson is working hard. You know he's not he's not one of these players where you've seen a lot of them, um, but they're all working hard to close hips down. They're making it very difficult. Uh, no, I, I think the longer it goes, again, the, um, quite happy. I'm sitting here quite happy just now. <laughs> All right, then let's see whether we get some goals in the second half. I rather suspect we will. Let's go back out then to Hamden, to Billy McNeil, and of course to Jock Brown. Get some goals, Doogie, that's for certain, because this game must be settled this afternoon if it means extra time and even penalty kicks, then we're going to have to see the ball hit the net before the day is out. So there's lots of entertainment to come, and I certainly am looking forward hugely to this second half because I really do believe that the Fernand have come to make a contest of it. Hibs still look to be a very well organised, confident side. And I think after the half time pep talks, Billy, we may see some real fireworks. Yes, I think well, obviously at half time that uh, Jockey Scott of the two mans will be happier. But let's not forget, Jock, that Hibs don't lose goals. They don't lose a lot of goals. They've got a mean defence. Other than that match at Ibrox, they, they, they haven't lost very many goals at all. Um, they've, they, they're playing confident at the back. They're prepared to shorten the game as much as they can. But I honestly do feel that Alec Miller will, will ask, or perhaps even demand of Mickey Weir, that he pushes himself wider, gets himself into a position where they can play balls into his feet to allow him to go and, and have a go at the full back. There is one player on the bench who could come on and do something creatively with, with some style, and that's Ian McCall, who's already been on in a, in a Skull Cup final for Rangers, although that wasn't the happiest of occasions for him against Aberdeen. But do you think we may see some alteration of that kind? There's Neil Orr and Dave Beaumont to the hip subs, and Eddie Cunnington, who's more a defensive player, along with Ian McCall for the family. Well, I think Ian McCall is the type of player who would relish this, this atmosphere. He has the ability to go up people with the ball. It may well be that... Uh, that Jockey will decide that young Chris Sinclair has done enough, although he's, he's had a good first half for such a young lad. And it may well be that we see Ian McCall come on in that position and maybe even switch to the other side of the field to switch from his right foot onto his left foot where he, where he can hit some curling shots. Well, certainly no change in the defending ranks at this stage. The same 11 have emerged. 
Uh, the treble is still on. Well, there are some Dunfermline supporters retaining the sense of humour, all right. The treble is still on. Well, the Skull Cup final is a realistic possibility. The league, I think, maybe beyond Dunfermline. And it's Martin McLeod who has earned the applause of the Hibs supporters sprinting out of the head of that Hibs lineup. And once again, no change being made. Of course, it is extremely early to consider substitutions at this stage when there is the possibility of extra time. So some well-dressed and firm and supporters there, all geared up for the occasion. Some spaces at the firm end, but precious few at the Hibs end of the pitch. So it's all set to get back. And away again, there's the Hibs supporters packed in there at the East Terracing. Try to lift their favourite with some vocal support for the second half. So we're off for the second half of the match. And we're looking early on for any tactical alterations which may have been made by either manager at half-time. Here's Keith Wright in that inside left channel, taking on Davy Moyes, looking for Evans in the middle. And it's very good defending by Noddy McCarthy, covering the run made by Evans. The him starting the second half, as though they really do mean business. Now look at the defensive work at number four, Noddy McCarthy here. Evans is very quick, but McCarthy was determined he would get there first. Good piece of defensive work, but equally Jock, an indication that Keith Wright is going to push into the inside left channel, get balls on his left foot and sweep them into that goal area. There's Mickey Weir flighting in the corner. Evans on the turn! A fine effort again from young Gareth Evans. Andy Rhodes was very relieved to see that go over. The header out by Scott Leach was a good one. Here was Evans on the turn, taking that on the half volley, rising a shade too quickly. He's got that ability because he reads this well. It's played in at the short post. As it's headed clear, watch him, he peels off Jock. Has a look at it, swings his right foot at it. It's not all that far away. So a very fast start to the second half made by Hibernian. A kind of reminder to Dunfermline that... that favourite status may be justified here's Mitchell moving ahead from McLeod Mitchell continuing his ball is still in play but determined work again defensively by Derek McWilliams back it goes to Andy Rhodes so good work again from McWilliams who is once on the Hibs books as a youngster so the Thurman now is striding forward with the skipper Nori McCarthy Here's Sharp, Sinclair. Sharp with a hopeful ball upfield. Well won by McIntyre. Hamilton into midfield. McLeod drifting in from the left to take possession. Trying to run away there from Craig Robertson. Mickey Weir's on the touchline here. Resisting that tackle from Sinclair. Looking for the return pass from Evans. Sending over a fine ball, and that almost reached the head of Keith Wright. Great wing play again, this time on the right from Hibbs, with Mickey Weir causing the problems. Ryan Hamilton. Evans again. Electric turn inside. Escorted wide there by Davy Moyes. The slip results in a throw to Dunfermline. Well, some very good work done early in the second half by Gareth Evans, but with two minutes plus of the second half gone, I make it now that Dunfermline have had an amazing spell without a goal. Here was Mickey Weir taking the return pass, going towards the byline, pulling this across. Keith Wright almost reached that on the near post. Here's Weir again, trying to get away from Sharp, but down in the end, the penalty kick has been given. It's been a terrific start in the second half by Hibs, and now they have the opportunity to gain the reward. And I think looking at this, it could have been a penalty right there. We have stayed in his feet, and as Sharp went down, he appeared to catch him perhaps with his arm, or did he? Well, I wonder when the infringement was committed. But the penalty given instantly by McGinley, by referee McGinley. I think it was good refereeing job because it gave Mickey Weir the chance to see if he could finish. But uh, when it was obvious that he was going down, and I, I think that uh, Graham Sharp definitely pulled him down twice in actual fact. So 
So Andy Rhodes has yet to be beaten from a penalty kick in open play this season. Here's Tommy McIntyre. The record is gone. The Hibs take the lead. Tommy McIntyre, after four minutes of the second half, put Hibs in front. And it was a masterly penalty kick under immense pressure. And Andy Rhodes, who undoubtedly is the penalty saving king, showing McIntyre where to put the penalty. And McIntyre said, Thank you very much. That will do fine. It's an excellent penalty in these circumstances in a final. Yes, his composure was excellent, Jock, but it, to, be, to be fair, the, the head start to the second half has been very, very impressive. And Mickey Weir, in actual fact, has played a big influence because a couple of little sharp one-twos in and around the edge of the box, flipped across in that Keith Wright almost put away and then was very, very much instrumental in that, that penalty kick. Well, the kind of wing play which Gordon Jury was asking for at half-time, delivered by Mickey Weir, and the penalty kick struck home by Tommy McIntyre. And that statistic I was anxious to tell you about, I will now put to you, and that is that it's now just over eight hours of football since the Thurman scored. So they really do have a major task. I may get their last goal. They scored in the 17th minute of their match against St. Man on the 28th of September. So eight hours and now a couple of minutes since they last found the net. And since indeed beating Dundee United 3-1 in the quarter-final on the 3rd of September, they've only scored one goal from open play, and that was that goal from the match against St. Man. That apart, they had the penalty kick scored by Derek McWilliams against the Airdrie in the semi-final to bring them here. So they'll have to try to conjure up goals from somewhere now to save this final. There's Keith Wright, who has become more and more involved as the match has worn on. He had a very slow start. Coming from the Hibernian supporters, they're sensing the prospect of a cup final victory which looked to be so unlikely a few short months ago. And indeed, the other important aspect of victory this afternoon is that the winning side will qualify for the UEFA Cup next season. And that's a very big incentive. Alec Miller's on the track below us. Shouting anxiously at his players, not entirely happy with things happening up front. There's Mottram from Wilson Town as the fourth official, waving Miller back to the dugout as Cosma tries to break away from Brian Hamilton. The referee will take action against the Hibs player in the form of a little lecture here. Fluent running again from Cosma, the arms are flying, as has become rather too customary in Scottish football. Was Hamilton who was the culprit. Was sharp with the free kick. Hooked away there by Hamilton. The dummy from Evans allows Evans to go in. Uh, he's always right to go in behind him, but good covering play by Ray Sharp. The offside flag up on the near side against Keith Wright as the ball was won on the far side by Evans. The linesman has not moved the muscle. He's still standing with that flag upraised. He still hasn't been spotted by the referee. Kenny Clark from Paisley there with the flag aloft, still standing there. He hasn't changed position. And then Fermlin, centre-half, Davy Moyes, has drawn the attention of the referee to that incident. And an offside decision has been given, so the corner kick will not be taken. It's a free kick to Dunfermline. Oh, Billy, any way back for Dunfermline now? I mean, lost that early goal. Well, this is where the question is going to be asked of them, Jock. The, the, the thing, the goal scoring record is not very impressive. And equally, Hibs are very, very confident and powerful at the back. I think they've got a very, very difficult task. But it's a cup final, anything happens. We haven't seen an awful lot of, of, of Cosmo in a free running sense. It may well be that he's got to be asked to impose his ability in, in quite a dramatic fashion. It's a poor free kick by Moyes, allowing Weir to break through the middle. And Moyes goes to medium. The advantage has been allowed. 
with him still in possession. There's Brian Hamilton. I fancy Davy Moyes will be in trouble as soon as the ball is dead. But it's still Hibbs coming forward. Miller trying to find Keith Wright. Across goes Sharp. And referee McGinley looks for Davy Moyes. Yes, there's trouble here for the Fellman centre half, who showed his frustration after a very bad free kick to Mickey Weir as he came racing into a tackle, which didn't really make contact, luckily for Weir. Well, it caught him just as he was riding the challenge. Miller's cross. McLeod beaten in the air by McWilliams. Here's Craig Robertson. Well, it's been a major dent in the Dunfermline and confidence, that early goal. And it is the sixth time this season that... Oh, there's a trouble for Mother McLeod for a little trip on Derek McWilliams. He's going to be booked for that, the Hibs captain and assistant manager. But it was... Really a rather rash one by Mother McLeod as McWilliams was going across him there. A little crack there from Mother McLeod. Well, a booking for that and a little complaint. I think he was unlucky actually, Jock. I don't think he tried to, to bring him down there. Um, and I think he was just, he, he, his foot caught uh, Derek McWilliams' trailing foot. Well, referee McGinley shows the yellow card for the second time of the match as the free kick is taken by Tom Wilson. The point I was going to make about that goal for Hibs is it's the sixth time this season that they've scored just before or just after half-time, which is quite a remarkable point. Well, if there's a time to score, Jock, it's right after half-time, particularly in the cup final. Um, obviously, Alec Miller's had a, had a go at them at half-time, and they've responded well. They, they look a yard quicker. So that handball doesn't matter because the ball was out of play for the throw before it happened. Before it happened, there's Cosma leaving for Leach. Well, Leach had a very promising start of the match, but he's had precious little service, especially in the second half. There goes Keith Wright and Andy Rhodes, showing tremendous confidence and composure. Well, Wright, when he works up steam like that, is very quick indeed. Rhodes appears to be moving more freely, thanks to the work done at half-time by Philip Yates, the physio. Good play, that, by Rhodes. Now, Cosma. Well, this Van Cosma really has to dispel the feeling that he is something of a luxury player in these Newfoundland ranks. Here's Sinclair. Caught by Hamilton, the referee's nothing wrong with that. It's Mickey Weir who breaks. Breaking the ball again, falling to a hips player. Weir this time, now Miller. Switching play very well indeed to the far side, but the pass runs away from Pat McGinley. Yes, there does appear to have been an injection of pace by Hibbs to the proceedings in the second half. Yes, I think perhaps in the first half they were finding their way just a little bit, and it's an interesting point that most of their goals seem to have come just before that half-time break and just after it, but they've certainly settled into a very, very purposeful-looking squad just at this particular time. That's good control from Wright. Very elusive running also, away from Tom Wilson. Playing it in early, McCarthy had to be careful. He's done well, though, in defence, Dolly McCarthy, but Keith Wright is becoming more and more important to Hibbs. McCarthy has a central role in defence, which he's been performing very well indeed. This is Keith Wright. He's won a corner kick-off, Norrie McCarthy. Another tribute to both sets of supporters is confirmation of the crowd this afternoon. It's officially returned at 40,377. So a marvellous crowd without either of the big Glasgow pairing or without Aberdeen and the United or Hearts to have such a healthy crowd. Speaks volumes for the Scottish game. We have couldn't get away from Cosma. A bit of arm wrestling resulting in the free kick. So there is activity on the Dunfermline bench. They're going to make a change very shortly. Sharp to Sinclair. There's Craig Robertson looking for Leach. The cover provided by Hunter. And McGinley had to be very careful indeed there with Billy Davis snapping at his heels. That's a measure, perhaps, of the Hibs' confidence. 
Yes, it's a good tidying up work by Pat McGinley, but uh, both he and Brian Hampton have actually been very, very settled in that uh, mid midfield area and have been very, very impressive. Well won by Moyes. Here's the header down by McCarthy to Sharp. Comes off Mickey Weir. A change is going to be made now by Infernal manager Jockey Scott. Young Chris Sinclair, who certainly has demonstrated a lot of talent, has been deemed to have done enough. And the more experienced figure of Ian McCall comes on. Well, he started his career here at Hamden, playing for Queen's Park before going to Dunfermline, then to Rangers, then to Bradford, and back to Dunfermline. And Ian McCall has vivid memories of a great opportunity in that Skull Cup final of 1989 when he missed the chance for Rangers. Aberdeen going on to win the match. It's played forward there by Hunter. Chested down by Evans. Here's Weir. Now Martin McLeod on the turn. Denied the chance for a clear shot at goal, though. So Hibernian leading by that Tommy McIntyre penalty kick. One hour of the match gone. It was McIntyre's fourth goal of the season. That's a good return for a central defender. Only two of them from the penalty spot. So Alec Miller looking a shade more relaxed, if that's possible, for a cup final manager. Sharing to Mother McLeod to keep the momentum going. Confident play there again from Willie Miller, but Leach was quick with that snap tackle. And such a promising young player in the Republican ranks, 22 years old from Sheriston Juniors. way through there for McCall. Very high challenge there by Mickey Weir, then the Miller and Leach clash. So we're getting a little bit tense, this exchange here. Leach and Miller together. And the result of that is a free kick to heads. A tip from the rear by Moyes on right. Davy Moyes played at Wembley in a cup final in the Freight Rovar Cup final for Bristol City against Mansfield Town and missed a penalty and a penalty shootout. Mansfield winning the match. In his second major final this is. Played in by Mitchell. Rhodes in trouble. There's Mickey Weir with a shooting chance. Well, such intricate ball control there to try to get the ball into a position to strike it for goal. Applause there from the Hibs fans. It's a good ball into the middle here. And good challenge, it's, it's not the best punch out. Mickey Weir does very, very well, brings it across, left foot shot and all that far away. He's been a real threat to, to the Fellman defence in this half. Well, Andy Rhodes here, perhaps showing the effect of the injury, not quite an usual spring. Ian McCall will be very relieved to see that shot from Mir go past in view of the way in which he failed to tidy up. McWilliams and uh, Leach McWilliams again across it comes to the near side cut up there by Mickey Weir careless one from McWilliams across the pitch and the path of Weir the one two there with right it's great play again from Weir and Rhodes beats the ball to safety but right now the Fernand seem to have no answer to Mickey Weir he could really turn out to be the overall match winner and Rhodes coming out there between Wright and McCarthy. That's a serious problem this within the family defence. Mickey Weir is right in the mood. Yes, he, he, he's torturing the film at the minute. Lovely again, lovely little sharp one-two. Good ball into the middle. He, he's a real threat to them. There's no doubt whatsoever about that. So the header down by Hamilton. Here's Willie Miller. Gareth Evans running into the hole there behind the left side of the family defence. Control let him down for a second. It's gone for a goal kick. Evans appears to be aggrieved about that, but Linesman had a perfect view. Well, that changed. Ian McCall on to replace Chris Sinclair. You did mention that as a possibility, Billy, at half time. Yes, I think uh, the young lad Chris Sinclair showed tremendous potential and a lot of composure in, in a major final like this. But Ian McCall's got that little bit of experience, and I think that Jockey Scott is maybe banking that he can get uh, some play in around the, the Hibs box where he can take people on. McIntyre with a header. 
Jason Thurman still struggling to be seen as an attacking force in this second half. Keith Wright complained that he was balked today as he made that run through on the Thurman penalty box. Nick Williams holding off the challenge from McGinley but forced to go back to Andy Rhodes. Well, the Thurman really do need someone to stamp authority on the middle of the field for them, and that's proving to be very difficult against Hamilton and McGinley in particular. Here's McCall. Well, Mickey Weir really is full of himself these days, getting back with another good tackle. Leach helps it on. Not Cosmo arriving, just a split second too late. Davis linking with McCall. It's a good turn using Davis as a decoy. Well, that's a foul, surely, yes. It's obstruction by Weir. Almost made a huddle, which McCall could have cleared. A great chance this, though, for the Inferno, especially with Davy Moyes, the main threat in the penalty box for a high ball from McCall. Played across the far side, well won by Keith Wright. The danger not yet cleared up. Williams returns it. McCall trying to get in behind Mickey Weir. One again by Hunter. It's returned by Wilson. Not very attractive stuff this, but it keeps the pressure on the Hibs defence. And in the end, challenge from the rear by Ray Sharp on Gareth Evans gives Hibs the free kick. While the score remains at 1-0 to Hibs, there's still the danger of a late equaliser. They'll be looking for a second, which would give them a cushion. That's the end that it would feel would be enough to see them through to win the trophies. Two trophies, in fact, the League Cup and the Skull Cup at stake. It's back from Hamilton to McGinley. There's Willie Miller. Weir takes over. Miller trying to line up an accurate cross, playing that towards the near post area, but there was no runner in that direction. Cosma met there by Gordon Hunter. Still hasn't made the kind of impact this fan Cosma, which the defending supporters would have been hoping for. No, he hasn't. He hasn't really been allowed into the game because the Hibs midfield have been very, very strong indeed. They've, they've both supported their attacks and both been prepared to work back and defend. Sharp overshooting his forwards. Just a little sign, perhaps, that heads have gone down somewhat in the Feldman ranks. They know that goal scoring has been such a problem in recent weeks. The hips do appear to have the bit between the teeth now. Here's Graham Mitchell showing lots of confidence defensively. Well, that's the kind of confidence which is generated by an excellent run. Good player, Graham Mitchell. Started out as a sweeper at Hamilton, came here in that capacity, now playing very well at left back. So the midway point now in the second half, three quarters of the match gone. The major statistic is the only goal of the match scored by Tommy McIntyre. Just a couple of minutes into the second half, after a foul by Sharp on Weir. Scott Leach. Good ball from Davis. Here's Sharp. Rolls reversed here. Sharp put under pressure by Weir. McCarthy getting in there to cut the ball off before it could reach Keith Wright. Good composed defending. Here's Tom Wilson. Picking out McCall. Both from a pin spot players, these Wilson and McCall. That is a very familiar piece of turf to them. So Hibbs at the moment looking excellent value for their one goal lead. John Burridge hasn't been troubled in this second half in any significant way. Wilson getting to the pitch of the ball.
Here's McGinley, powering his way forward again, loves to do this. Good running there by McGinley. There's no foul there, he went past Davy Moyes and took off in dramatic fashion, but there was no contact with the defending centre-half. So referee McGinley, ways play on. And this time it's a foul by Leach on Hunter, going in with the elbow raised for that high ball. Well, Gordon Hunter and Tommy McIntyre were tours of strength in the hip side, which won the semi-final against Rangers, and they're on the brink now of getting their eventual reward with cup winners medals and less than Fernman can produce something before the end there's Miller cut off by McCarthy Cosmo waiting for the ball Hunter wasn't prepared to do that he caught the back of the leg of his fan Cosmo as he made that tackle but another feature of the play though was the way in which Cosmo was prepared to allow the ball to run to him whereas Hunter wanted to go and meet it Yes, a pass forward here. I'm not all that convinced it was such a severe challenge, but uh, this time Cosmos had a disappointed day, and I think he's just looking for a little bit of a rest there. Well, Eddie Cunnington is the remaining Dan Furman substitute who could be called upon. He has played at left back and in the middle of the field on the left side, but uh, it's McCall as substitute that Dan Furman will be hoping may be able to turn the match, Cosma limps back into the fray and the Fernand had the free kick which Raymond Sharp will take he's aiming that for Davy Moyes who didn't let him down, here's Billy Davis well looking for one of those dipping volleys which can trouble goalkeepers so much so Billy Davis was in the 1983 cup final with Rangers, came out as a substitute one goal defeat against Aberdeen at the Scottish Cup final. So Cunnington limbering up below us, the second and Furman substitute. Vicky, we are getting up so well again. It's five foot four inch frame, leaping well to that. Miller finding Evans to the middle. Supporting player as we are, that's into the gap for Hamilton. Well, almost a magnificent pass that. Andy Rhodes had to be alert to collect the pass back before the corner kick had been conceded. A good, sharp, creative play from midfield, Billy. Most well, certainly, Jock, that uh, Hibs are confident now and they, they, they obviously can't see a way that they're going to allow Dunfermline back into the game. It's difficult to see where Dunfermline's goal is going to come from and I would honestly think the best, the best chance is maybe from a set piece and bringing David Moyes and Norrie McCarthy up and see if they get their head to something. Well, there's one man who hates defeat, Tom Wilson, the fullback. Looking for a run made by Scott Leach. The ball just a shade over hit, making it easy for John Burridge. Well, Burridge in his 24th season as a professional player. Just about five weeks off his 40th birthday. Playing for his 12th senior club. Played forward there by Sharp. Cosma. Showing good control. Clearly fell that time by McIntyre. Trying to suggest to the referee it was a dive by the Hungarian, but I don't think that'll be borne out by the replay. Here was Cosma, and it appeared to me clearly a foul. Yes, I think it's exactly right there. Having criticised him a minute ago, Jock, I think that uh, he was entitled to that foul on that occasion. Well, well, one of those set pieces which Billy McNeil mentioned may produce some reward for Infernland. There are four in the wall. Cosma angling the ball in towards the top corner. Asking a lot from 25 yards to beat goalkeeper like John Burridge, so experienced. He's a very accurate striker of the ball, but he tries to place this one, and I'm not convinced he would have had the, the strength or the power to, to trouble John Burridge. Now Cosma left with the task of trying to flight that in. He has scored only once this season for the Furman. There's Moyes. Headed away by McGinley, picked up deep by Davis for the Fernland. This is Sharp. 
resisting that challenge from Weir. And he had to, otherwise Weir would have been in the clear. Osma to McCall. Teasing Willie Miller here. Trying to outrun him on the flank. And the tackle came from Gordon Hunter. Well, suggesting he missed Ian McCall with a tackle, but why he dived in, I really don't know. No, it was a foul. The referee was right again, and uh, really, he could have shepherded him right into the corner there. Well, the work had been done, really, by Willie Miller. But Hunter's rest challenge gives McCall this free kick opportunity. McCarthy setting it up there. Here's McWilliams. And he's eager, Hibbs players coming out of defence. McWilliams is on the ground, there's right breaks. Hibbs getting a lot of players forward to support him. One of them is Graham Mitchell. He's brought down well with a good tackle from Greg Robertson. Well, the experience of Robertson vital there. He realised the danger posed on that break. The flowers head out, here's Pat McGinley. Ricky Weir calling for the ball on the right. Willie Miller is a safer pass, though, for McGinley. And it had to be turned away by Wilson. Wright was coming in on the blind side. I reckon there may have been a call there from Andy Rhodes. Well, dusk descending at Hamden. 40,000 inside the stadium watching Hibbs. A goal ahead. Going into the last quarter of an hour of the match. Andy Rhodes organising his defenders. I well, remember the Fairman trailed Airdrie in the semi-final until they got a late penalty. Here's a chance for Brian Hamilton. Well met by Robertson. A chance down the break for McCall. He has help over on the far side from Cosma. Still McCall trying to go all the way himself. Well, he didn't take the time to look up. He would have spotted Istvan Cosma. A lot of space on the right. Frustration on the face of McCall. Yes, Joe, this fan caused me a tremendous run through the inter right channel, but I don't think Ian McCall could get his head up to see him, and otherwise he might have created a real bit of problem for Hibbs. Good play from McCall. Sharp picking out Leach. It's a good turn. Back it comes here today with a chance for them, Fanlon. That's well saved by Boric for the best opening of the match, carved out by Dunfermline. That will give them some encouragement. But Leach's back healer opened the space up for Billy Davis. He didn't catch this with the power he wanted, I don't think. But Boric made a good save. No, he did. He just didn't quite get to hold it here. But a nice, confident little back pass. Billy Davis takes it in his stride and it's on his favourite foot, but doesn't quite get a hold of it. But nevertheless, Dunfermline are going to go for broke now. Nothing else for it for the family. They must send players forward looking for an equaliser. Clouds head up. Wilson having his pace tested by Evans. Rhodes with the throw. Picks out Wilson. Very accurately indeed. That's for Cosma. McIntyre was forced to play the ball in the end by the attentions of the Hungarian international. Going to kick to two of them down there. Yes, Cosmo's better at running from those deep positions, Jock. Uh, in his defence, he, he, he likes to play from behind his front players and he's asked to play off as a front player, and I think he's just that little bit uncomfortable in that way. So Ian McCall taking this in swing out for Dunfermline. Bonnage with a good punch. It's a turn there by McWilliams. An acrobatic clearance by McIntyre. Sharp lofts it back in towards the area. Moyes got up well to that. And Burridge goes down bravely as Craig Robertson came huddling in. Good understanding there between Burridge and Hunter. Characteristic little turn towards the goal by Burridge before the clearance. Moyes doing well once again. He had a good touch by Leach. Here's Cosma. It's a good spell this from Dunfermline. They really are trying to get back in turns. And it goes all the way through to McCall. There's Leach, the outside of the post. Scott Leach can't believe it. And that's undoubtedly a life for him. A delicate ball played in there by Cosman on its way to Ian McCall. He looked up, played back across. 
the first time ever it came from Leeds and that came off the base of the post. Very unlucky, a lovely ball from Cosmo Jock, it's picked up at the end of the day by Ian McCall. He looks up, plays it into the middle, and Leach is only inches away from making, getting the equaliser there. But a very, very good spell for Dunfermline. And it was a very good effort by Scott Leach, the way he controlled it, tried to steer it in, he didn't try to blast the ball. And almost got some reward, that's Cosmo with Mitchell. Well, Hibs who looked so comfortable on that lead for so long, now having to work desperately in defence to keep the Dunfermline at bay. Led in by McWilliams. And fine defending there by Brian Hamilton. Dunfermline fans looking for a handball decision, but they know there wasn't one there. Willie Miller's diving head out, it breaks for Sharp. Dunfermline playing with renewed confidence now. Mickey Weir had to go back and help defensively. Well, he must be a candidate for man of the match, Mickey Weir. Got a fine game, both in attack and in defence. So just ten minutes left for Hibbs to survive, or for Dunfermline to conjure up an equaliser. There's Davy Moyes and uh, McCall. Very determined players out there. A change being made now by. And Fernland are withdrawing Raymond Sharp and replacing him with Eddie Cunnington. So that's a direct replacement. Cunnington came from Chelsea a couple of years ago. Lanarkshire boy and has the chance to use his energy coming from that deep position, the left back position. Back it goes to Davis and forced onto his weaker foot by Brian Hamilton. They were once at Simon together. Header down, finds Leach. Craig Robertson denied a clear shooting chance. Cosma looks to Leach and says, why didn't you give it to me? Headed away by Cunnington. Here's Evans. Back with Mother McLeod. A misunderstanding there between McLeod and Wright. His possession back to Newfoundland. Confirmant having a right go at the moment. They, in many, many ways, they've got Hibs on, on the rack at the back. That uh, It's obviously going to be a very, very exciting end to, to this particular 90 minutes. Confirmant pressing to put the match into extra time, which they would do if they could equalise. And one of the clouds, just the kind of player that Hibs will be very happy to have in this late crisis. Hanging on. Leading by a goal to nil, his experience valuable to organise the Hibs troops on the field of play. Down the supporters giving some encouragement to their favourites. Led in by Cosma, well won by Miller, with McWilliams. It's collected by Mickey Weir, he's up on the run again. Two up, right and Evans. Miller goes inside. That's good running by the fullback. Playing it through the gap there for Evans, showing good control, making for the byline. Also looking for Mickey Weir. Cunnington cuts off the possible pass to Weir. Still Evans in possession. Is he on the corner kick? Well, is it a good match, Gareth Evans? May not have been in the starting lineup had Mark McGraw been fully fit. But he certainly has justified his inclusion this afternoon. Former Rotherham striker. Weir plays it short to Willie Miller. The angle draws, setting up a heading chance for Pat McGinley. Prolific goal scorer this season from midfield. He scored seven times. Joint leading goal scorer with Mickey Weir for Hibbs. And here's why he gets into these positions. Didn't quite catch the header from him. Good cross ball from, from Miller, brings it into middle, and his header is not all that far away. Nice bit of relief after the press that Dunfermline was exercised on them. Here's Tom Wilson. Now Cunnington. Mickey Weir playing it to the gap to right. This could settle it for him. It's Keith Wright. Mickey Wheel, that delicate pass. Keith Wright going in 
looking at measuring the finish, and Rose was left without a hope. It's a delightful little ball from, from Mickey Weir. Keith Wright's not offside, his time goes on to perfection, and a classical piece of finishing from Keith Wright. Has had a lot in this game, but there you are. Scores what I think will be a decisive goal. And the seventh goal of the season for Keith Wright. Half a million pounds, well spent by Eric Miller. And Keith Wright, who had a tough first half, has been much more influential in the second, and that surely now is a decisive moment. These Hibs fans think so. And surely now there's no way back for Dunfermline. They have only five minutes to save the game. As Hibs look for more. Well, the Dunfermline caught out there, pushing so many people forward. All was going to be exposed to a fast break when they were so committed to attack. Here's this fan, Cosma. Good defending by McIntyre. Stayed up, kept his eye on the ball. Well, the Hibs fans breathing much more easily now, and down below us, Alec Miller, clearly, has completed a miraculous comeback for Hibs. And I can confirm now that Mickey Weir, who delivered the pass there for Keith Wright, has been voted man of the match. Here he goes again, looking for Evans on the right. And a bit of back chat off the ball by Derek McWilliams is going to result in a booking. Well, how foolish that was by McWilliams. Clearly thoroughly frustrated about the fact that the game now surely has run away from the Dunfermline. And he showed his frustration with a bit of lip to the referee. With a sea of green and white from the Hibs end. Well, Hibs really on the march back. One defeat only in the league. And sure now to win the Skull Cup. Three and a half minutes left for play. What has the referee given? It looks like a free kick. An indirect free kick as a result of that back chat from Derek McWilliams. It's a chance for Hibbs to exploit a set piece. So Mickey Weir, who was brought down for Tommy McIntyre's penalty and then set up Keith Wright for the second goal. To be the sponsor's man of the match. And the free kick to come here. There's Brian Hamilton. That's right off the post. What a cracking effort that was from Brian Hamilton. Well, that really would have put some icing on the cake. Still, Hibbs come forward. Led in by Keith Wright. Finds its way to McGinley. And that is very close to. Well, Hibbs not content, clearly, with a two-goal lead, looking for a third. We're orchestrating. That's thundered in by Brian Hamilton. I think Rhodes get a fingertip to that. What a marvellous strike. And it's an indication that Hibbs take this game as theirs and want to enhance that lead just a little bit more. Well, the bedlam around us coming from the Hibbs supporters. It's disappointment again for Dunfermline. Lovely point, Jock, because I don't think anyone in, in Scotland would grudge Alec Miller this success, assuming it stays this way, because uh, last season he, he was with a club that looked down and out. He's taken the confidence of being given his job for an extended period, and he's brought this club to this cup final and to, to the very edge of Europe. But his good fortune in this competition continuing, five times involved here as a player with Rangers, without loss, and again... First time as a manager. So 90 seconds left. Hibbs easing away towards the final whistle, leading by two goals to nil. It will take it's a miracle now for the Fernand to do anything about this. There's a little bit of stoppage time perhaps to be added on. Not too much though. Out comes Andy Rhodes. Well, the Hibs supporters savouring the moments now towards the final whistle. An offside flag goes up against Gareth Evans. And Hibs certainly have derived the reward for stepping up the pace of the match. 
after half time. Whatever Alec Miller did at that period of the interval it certainly had a galvanising effect on Hibbs. It's helped on by Moyes. There's Gordon Hunter. Keith Wright chesting it down. That's played back by Davis to Wilson. And Furman to the credit still battling on. Half a minute remaining plus stoppage time. Just seconds away from Hibbs' first success since 1972 back with Billy Davis over to the far side to McWilliams playing in a fine cross and that was only inches away from Scott Leach and from Craig Robertson and that just about sums up the Firmland's day no luck at all there in front of goal Craig Robertson trying very hard to score one of those goals for which he's been so renowned from midfield. For the build-up of noise and hip supporters waiting for Brian McGinley, the referee, to blow the final whistle. Moyes with the header. And out it goes for the throw, which Willie Miller will take in leisurely fashion. There's McCarthy, now Davis. Run here for Cosma. Hunter matching him all the way. Quite happy to stump that out of play. Bellman sending players forward. Davy Moyes has run forward from his defensive position to become involved in this attacking move. It's a consolation only, which the Bellman can be looking for now. The ball was out for a corner. Mickey Weir couldn't keep it in. We're past the 90 minute mark. It's injury time now which gives the firm on this chance on the corner kick to earn some consolation. Helped on there by Burridge, there's McWilliams. Played high in the air by Hunter. Uh, Ruffy by McGinley ends the match. Jubilation there on the Hibs bench. The manager Alec Miller turns calmly away to shake the hand of Jockey Scott. But it's a triumph for the Hibs manager, there's no question about that. Beleaguer throughout last season, the club in jeopardy, his job in jeopardy, and he's back now to take the acclaim of those Hibs supporters for a marvellous second-half performance in particular. Neil Orr goes on to shake hands with opponents and teammates alike. It was an outstanding second-half performance from Hibernian, inspired by a little Mickey Weir who won the Man of the Match award. But these Hibs fans, Hibs players, rather, showing total delight as they congratulate each other. And Alec Miller is now with Rob McLean. Alec, how was it for you? Oh, murder. I felt the first half, none of the two teams could settle. And that's what we spoke about at half-time. We spoke about getting a wee bit more width in the game because we never get that in the first half. And just go and do your best because I felt up to that point we were letting ourselves down. It's a fantastic story though, isn't it? The Hibs come back culminating in this cup win. It is, and hopefully that uh, from now on we can speak about football. Uh, to each and every one of the players, even the lads in the stand, I'm delighted for them because they've become winners a day, and that's what it's all about. What sort of emotions are running through you at this minute? I'm a winner. I've won as a manager and I've won as a player, and I'm absolutely delighted for the, my family and the people that stood by me when I was getting a rough time yet. I'm delighted for them. And those fantastic supporters as well. Aye, what a turnout for the heavy earning supporters today. And it shows that if we do get it right, then hopefully we can go from here. I think the teetotal regime might be broken tonight, might it? Well, I'll have a drink during the cup. I've always said that we sip out the cup, but that'll be me. Well done, Alec. Thanks very much. Thank so a delighted Alec Miller, and thoroughly he deserves this moment of sheer triumph he's been a crucial influence on the Hibs resurgence Mickey Weir has been given the man of the match award by Skoll, the sponsors and these Hibs fans will take some time to depart, they want to see these trophies presented now, the Skoll Cup and the League Cup, but it will be Dunfermline who go forward first to accept their runners-up medals and they will leave the stage first to leave everything to Hibs at the end the Furman supporters 
certainly giving plenty of backing to their players who've done so well to reach this stage in the midst of such a traumatic league season. So the Fulham players have gone up, led here by Norrie McCarthy. The expression in his face tells the whole story. The cup has to be left behind there, decked in green and white ribbons. Here's Billy Davis, who's been through this before, playing for Rangers against Aberdeen. Tom Wilson knows victory as well now as defeat. So the Fulham players go through, but they score the second goal. Keith Wright is talking to Hazel Evan. Keith, it was your ambition to win a major final. Your goal put the, the result beyond doubt. Congratulations. Thanks very much, Hazel. All credit to them, one. I mean, I was battle all the way. Uh, it wasn't a very good game for the fans, but just the right result for us. The lads battled all the way and we got the right result. Magnificent support from the Hibs fans. Oh, tremendous. We couldn't believe when we come out to see all the green and white scarves. Tremendous support. And we'll be celebrating tonight. And there's also a little uh, shared bonus of £1,000 with Morris Johnson. That's five goals in the tournament. Oh, that's very really nice. Uh, I wasn't really thinking about that before the game. Just concentrating on one in the game, but that's a nice wee bonus. Certainly is. Congratulations, Thanks Keith. Thanks very much. So the celebrations beginning on the terraces now as the Hibs players make their way up the Hamden steps to collect the trophies. Mickey Weir's already had to hand one over to Martin Ferguson, the Hibs coach, the man of the match award because he's going to have his hands full going up now to collect his winner's medal. So Alec Miller there shaking hands with Davy Moyes, still taking things calmly and with true dignity as Martin McLeod holds aloft the Skull Cup well a moment which he hoped he would be able to enjoy in his return from Germany and taking congratulations from all those around him Mrs Patricia Craig the wife of the league president Yul Craig and John McKenzie from Skull providing the trophies there Murder McLeod going through there there's Willie Miller his first taste of this moment Brian Hamilton had a Scottish Cup with his medal for St Martin Tommy McIntyre played 19 times only for Aberdeen before coming here to Hibs. Keith Wright, a Hibs supporter and now a Hibs winner. John Burridge, who won a League Cup medal for Aston Villa in England. Pat McGinley, who played so well. So did Graham Mitchell. Gordon Hunter, a hero in defence. He was a loser here for Hibs against Aberdeen in 85. Mickey Weir is the man of the match. There's Neil Orr, who's been such an important figure for Hibs. And Dave Beaumont, who's yet to play for Hibs following his transfer from Luton Town. Now, We'll see the reaction of these Hibs supporters when their favourites arrive out on the pitch again. There's Brian.